Welcome back everyone. So today I'm going to be talking about what's known as the FIRE movement. So I'm going to be giving my thoughts on this topic, but before we do, I'm going to provide everyone with an update on my trading 2 on 2 portfolio. And so we can see that my account value has just hit the £10,000 threshold. Of course, that includes any contributions that I've added, and that is the bulk, and also the dividends that I receive. They're all combined together. I think it's quite common for individuals to look at whole numbers, whether it's 5k, 10k, 100k, and use that value as a milestone. And that's exactly what I'm doing here. So £10,000 is just an excuse to celebrate, I guess. So switching over to the eToro platform, the only changes that have taken place is the value of the underlying stock. So we can see that the profit level is at over $12. So if anyone is interested in joining me on this eToro journey, I have a link in the description below. If you want to copy my portfolio, then it will copy all my active trades. And I only started this recently, but we can see the last two months have been profitable. The risk factor has increased slightly to that of 5. I'm not fully sure how eToro calculates risk. I'm aware that if you trade cryptocurrencies, which I don't, then that risk factor increases. But from my end, none of these companies are too risky. I guess they are adding a certain higher risk weighting to REIT based companies. But overall, this is a very stable portfolio. So if you want to join me on that journey, feel free to do so. And so the news I have for you today is an article talking about reasons why the certain individual ditched the FIRE movement. Now, I should first explain what exactly FIRE stands for. And so it's financial independence, retire early. Now, the goals of the FIRE movement is to effectively save as much as you possibly can. As a percentage, you're looking at around 50 to 75% of your income that you want to save year on year. And the FIRE movement is often documented with the ability to retire early as well. And so the age range that you're looking at is around 35 to 40. And for sure, it's going to be documented as headlines to retire at the age of 30. But for the most part, you're looking at a later age of retirement. So some of the prerequisites that you need is to have a high income. And ideally, this happens when you first start employment. So if those are at university, you generally finish at the age of 21 or 22. Then what you do with your income, which as I said earlier, saving 50 to 75%, you then invest into the stock market, generally a form of an index fund, and you allow compounding to take place. So we can see from the example that it's quite unlikely that you're going to have a high paying job. Investing in the stock market over an eight year period is not even that long. So the effects of compounding could be missed out should you stop working. And so if you don't have a high income, it simply means you will not be able to retire early at a young age. Now, for most 9 to 5 jobs out there, you are substituting your time for money. And given that time is a limited resource, then you can only earn a certain amount of money. And then to increase your salary, you're looking at pay rises, which are generally out of your control. And so assuming you have a high paid salary, which the majority of people don't have, but assuming you have a high paid salary, your only option is to continue working for a longer period. The other option is to create products or services that do not require you to substitute your time. Now there's numerous examples of individuals that do not need to substitute their time for money. A common example these days is a YouTube channel where you record your video and then you earn money from the ad revenue and it's the same amount of energy each time independent of the number of subscribers that you have on the platform. And there's more interesting examples such as building an e-commerce website where individuals will buy products Again, your time isn't needed other than the general maintenance. But for the most part, individuals are simply looking for a standard nine to five job. And if you enjoy that type of lifestyle, then that's completely fine. What you need to tell yourself is that you're simply not going to retire at a young age, but potentially you can do so in the future. Now, when you look at individuals that do reach this ability of no longer working, but having a passive form of income, they're generally still working. If you look at some of the famous individuals of the fire movement they'll have say a blog post which they'll maintain generally there'll be ads running so they're making money that way now what they have reached is that they can reduce their amount of work hours and they are not tied to their job and these are the types of goals that in the long run i do like so overall my opinion with the fire movement is that there are some very extreme versions out there but as i said it's great that people are thinking about the concept of retirement at a really young age realistically only a handful 
people can successfully retire at the ages specified, such as ages of 30. And even then, there are individuals that are making money from not substituting their time, or they've worked in a really high paying job from a very young age. But when we look at the UK, for instance, where we have our public pensions currently around 65 to 67, but if you can position yourself to retire at an age of, say, 55 or 57, i.e. 10 years before official retirement age, then those are the types of benefits that we should keep in mind. So definitely have a think about your investment journey. Decide what is important for you. And if you're investing a certain percentage of your income within the stock market, then you're already ahead of the game. So my question of the week is, what are your thoughts on the FIRE movement? Let me know in the comment section below. I'm always active responding and I enjoy chatting to all of you. So thanks for watching everyone. And with that said, I'll catch you in the next one.